Hello and welcome back to Wheeler Scientific. In today's video, we are taking a look at arc melting using a standard TIG welder. Melting point has always been a problem for me and my projects because there's a lot of projects that I want to do out there which I can't standardly do with the melting apparatuses I have currently. I have a propane furnace which gets pretty hot, but it has a downfall of needing to be outside and in the air so if I put something in there, it will react unless I build a special housing for it. And then if I build a special housing for it, it can't get as hot because the housing might melt. On the other hand, I have my glass blowing torch, which gets well in excess of 4000 degrees. But the problem with that is it needs oxygen and propane and it still has to be out in the open. So I can't really melt anything that needs to be in an inert atmosphere. This is where the concept of arc melting comes in. Arc melting will allow me to melt high temperature metals in a controlled environment leading to me being able to melt high, very high temperature materials in a controlled environment so I'm able to melt more react metals. Anyone who's done any form of electrical welding has done arc melting. TIG, stick, and MIG all use arcs of electricity to melt metal. In a TIG welder that has a tungsten electrode which then you arc it off the material. It generates a plasma arc, which then is used to melt the material, which causes you to be able to arc melt it. Now TIG welders are a very versatile piece of equipment because it allows you to weld pretty much any material that you want. You can weld aluminum, stainless steel, and regular old steel. When it comes to melting things, this annoying thing happens where the metal reacts with the atmosphere. Welders all know this and they have to use a shielding material. In the case of stick welding, the shielding material is this flux that melts onto the weld which protects it. But in MIG and TIG, you use a shielding gas. In some cases, it's an argon carbon dioxide mix. In TIG, you generally use an argon mix, which the argon shields the metal that's melting from reacting with both nitrogen and oxygen in the air. This shielding protects the weld and allows you to melt the material without it oxidizing and doing this thing called inclusions where the metal dissolves the air and nitrogen into it forming pockets and bubbles. Because the shielding gas already comes out of the nozzle, this makes it perfect for our arc melting because the argon will protect the material as we're melting it, which then allows us to form a nice bead. Now that we have our arc source out of the way, we need a way to convey that arc. On the TIG handle, you have a tungsten electrode, which will project the current. But those of you who've done electrical work understand the concept that you need to have a complete circuit for the electricity to flow. This is where our crucible comes in. Our crucible needs to be made out of a conductive material that can withstand the high temps. For this, I will use copper. Now you might be thinking to yourself, copper, that has a quite low melting point. But the cool thing about copper is its thermal conductivity. Copper is used in blast furnaces because of this fact that it has such a high thermal conductivity. Heat transfers so efficiently through copper that you're able to cool it and keep it well below the melting point of the copper material. Where iron or steel will melt if you try to arc onto it, copper can wick that heat away so quickly that it won't melt. This is a billet of 2 inch by 3 inch by 1 inch copper. This is a copper tellurium alloy. The tellurium doesn't really matter in this case. It was just cheaper to buy this alloy compared to pure copper. It works exactly the same. The copper needs to be machined with a few basic things. The first one is two divots on the top. This will allow us to control how the metal pools and will form our nice bead when we're melting. To put these divots in, I used a 3 quarter inch dome bit for a wood router. Now you may be thinking to yourself, copper, wood, not the same material. But copper is soft enough that if I slowly plunge the dome into it, it will remove the material and allow me to make those nice divots. Which that's exactly what I did. I put it into a drill press, got the copper all level, and slowly plunged it in using plenty of lubrication.
after a while of slowly drilling into it, I had my nice domes. The next step was to polish it up. There were some unsightly lines on it that I needed to remove. So I just used some sandpaper and slowly went down the grit line until I got a nice polish in the domes. The next step and the final thing that needed to be machined onto the material was a spot to securely clamp a wire to it. This will act to complete the circuit. I did this by drilling a hole. Remember when you're drilling tap holes, drill them slightly deeper than what they actually need to be because the tap has this tapered bit on the front which then that doesn't actually screw into it and make threads. Once it drilled out, I then tapped it with a tap and die. With that all done, I was able to connect my connection. I did set up a way to cool the copper block, but it didn't really pump enough water through it, so I need a larger heat sink. This worked temporarily, but I want to improve that in the future. And for the testing, I didn't actually use it, and I just cooled it off in water before it runs. Now with that all out of the way, we can start arc melting. Now, I just clamped it into a vise so that it would stay secure and have a nice electrical connection to the TIG welder. I'll be melting a few different materials today, and I will increase the temperature as I go up. The first one is tin. Tin has a melting point of 231.9 degrees Celsius, and this melted quite quickly. The next is copper, which comes in at 1085 degrees Celsius, which that melted also pretty quickly. Interesting that we're melting copper on copper, but you gotta watch out for here because once the copper starts sticking to the other copper, it can conduct and wick away that heat pretty efficiently. Next up is not a metal at all, but silicon. Silicon is a non-metal, but because of the copper plate being conductive, we're able to arc near, which then allows us to melt the silicon, which has a melting point of 1,414 degrees Celsius. Next up is iron. Iron comes in at a whopping 1,538 degrees Celsius. that melts quite easily. Next up is chromium. Chromium is very useful and is included in stainless steel, which gives it, it that stainless property. And that comes in at a melting point of 1,907 degrees Celsius. And that once again melts quite easily. Last but not least, the highest melting point element on the periodic table, tungsten, with a high temperature melting point of 3,399 degrees Celsius. 
and once again this melts quite easily. And here is how the beads turned out, which they turned out pretty quite well. A few of them have a little bit of oxidation on them, but I believe that's due to the material already having oxidation on it when I started, which then just wicked to the surface. I'm currently building an enclosure for the arc melter so that I don't have to worry about the atmosphere being just wrong and I can control the argon purity a lot better and the flow around the material a lot better which will give me better melts so I can melt more precious materials without having to worry about them oxidizing. This is a nice easy way to arc melt pretty much any element that you want and be able to melt any material that you want too. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for content to come and to see the final arc melter project. I have a lot of metal videos coming, so I will put this arc melter to very good use. Thanks for watching again, and see you later. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.